Hey everyone, welcome back to Kind of Frontline. Jay here with another review. Today I'm reviewing Royals number nine. The title of this issue is On the Other Side. It's written by Al Ewing, pencils by Javier Rodriguez, inks by Alvaro Lopez, colors by Jordi Belair, letters by VCs Clayton Cowles, cover by Javier Rodriguez, with varying covers by Mike McCone and Rochelle Rosenberg, John Tyler Christopher, Chip Zdarsky, and a lenticular cover by Juan Doe after Terry Austin's Uncanny X from number 142. The Royals continue their journey to the point of origin of the Sky Spears, to the progenitors, to where their true home lies. On the way, Flint begins to change while Medusa and Gorgon contemplate their relationship, and the rest of the crew discuss it as well. Because, let's face it, it's just that interesting. The story begins 5,000 years from now, with a skeleton trapped in a sky, beer, sky spear, as the human reaches out to touch it, when we then return to the present, with Flint looking into the mirror and notices a change as his eyes begin to glow, then return to normal, before his hand becomes crystallized from touching a sky spear previously. So, from this we learn that if you touch a sky spear and you're an inhuman, you will change. Uh, we then find Medusa in the bathroom in her quarters, throwing up blood, looking nothing like the strong queen we are used to. Just, a, just as Gorgon checks on her from her bed, she returns to him where they flirt and discuss the message that Black Bolt had escaped Maximus prison, and what this means when they return. As, you know, he is the king and she is the queen, and Gorgon is having an affair with her. Medusa explains that we all just need to get over the whole Black Bolt and Medusa shit thing as it's just all for show because they are king and queen and that's what everyone expects them to be. But now she has lost her gift, her hair. What is left of it is gray before the bow, the bow, bow music begins and they start to have intimate time. The rest of the crew discuss this as Flint arrives with his crystallized hand and tells them they are there even though sensors see nothing. They are at their rival. They are at where they are supposed to be, where they originated from. Um, his new eyes see it, even though their sensors tell them they're still in nothingness. And we find out that they're at the Garden Worlds, one of three in the Outer Ring. And on it, we find a Harvester class progenitor launching crystals from what appears to be fruit from a tree into space when he notices the ship and grabs it, which seemingly destroys it. The story was okay. The interlude with Medusa taking, um, talking about her relationship was way too meta for me. It felt like she was addressing the fans who, you know, think that Medusa and Black Bolt have to be the end game, you know, and that they're not, which is really what Marvel has been preaching to us for decades now. So, you know, I really don't care about that. I just want some more of the space sci-fi adventure in this story. We get that a little here, near the end, but not enough for me. It's mainly about, you know, that. There's no, I don't really care about them knocking boots in their quarters, you know? I don't care. It's, she's been knocking boots with a lot of people lately, so why do I care? I give the story three stars. The art here was good. Um, it just that nothing really stood out to me. The colors, while interesting and pretty to look at, all felt like it was trying to be artsy and had that indie feel to it. The colors in the art just felt more forced here and not as organic as it would in an indie book. So I give the art three stars. Overall, this issue was a nice read, but honestly, not all that... It wasn't really needed, as the majority of it was focused on how Medusa and Gorgon are bumping uglies in space. I feel like Crystal in the story, because, you know, she says that she doesn't care about, you know, them bumping ugly. She just wants to help her sister who is dying. Medusa is dying. That should be the point of the story. Or like Swain also points out in the story that the Terrigen is supposed to be killing her out of spite for destroying it. Wouldn't go into a place where Terrigen is originated from and is more plentiful. Wouldn't that be like increasing the rate of her dying? 
So should they actually be going to this place? Those are things I want to know. So with the story getting three stars and the art getting three stars, I give this an overall three stars and say, only pick it up if you're actually getting this title already. If not, you can skip this as, you know, this is a pretty bad legacy jumping on issue as we're really in the middle of a story arc and they're telling you, you know, this is the legacy issue. No, it shouldn't be. They should have finished the story arc and then picked up the legacy. So, well, those are my thoughts. Now I want to hear yours in the comments below. Also, like this video, subscribe to Comic Frontline, check out and subscribe to my channel, The Comic Book Theater, check out ComicFrontline.com, the site for previews, reviews, news, and interviews, along with fun, unique features with daily updates. Continue the conversation and join us on our Discord for free. Don't forget to like and follow me, The Comic Book Theater, Media Manus, and Comic Frontline on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus, and don't forget to catch Frontline Live every Tuesday night right here on YouTube and download it every week on iTunes for free. I'll include all these links in the description below. Until then, I'll catch you in the next review.